Now, before we do the intonation, I'm going to check the nut. Okay. Now, our spec is a 64th of an inch from the top of the first fret to the bottom of the string, the first fret. And you just want to barely see that line, if you see it at all. And it can be just a tad higher on the bass side than it is on the treble side, because the wound strings move farther when they vibrate. But this one looks like it's adjusted perfectly, so I don't have to do anything to the nut. Now I'm ready to go through and intonate. I hit the harmonic at the 12th fret, and I very lightly fret that note. Looks like that one is absolutely perfect, dead on. Okay, now switch to the B setting. Good too. Okay, that one's slightly, slightly uh, sharp, so we lengthen the string just a little bit. Drop it back, retune. Close enough. That one's sharp too. Bring that back. Okay, that one's way sharp. Looks pretty good change gauges radically, then you're going to have to have the guitar set up for that gauge. And people use a lot of different tunings, and that certainly affects intonation also. Okay, that one's too far back, so we're going to move it just a tad forward. Oop. Tried to get the guitar there, but I missed. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're going to go through and tune again. Now the G string has a tendency to go flat when you stretch it real far with these tremolos. So what we do is we give the G string an extra big stretch right down by the bridge. Make sure that it has moved as far as it's going to move. Now, your tuning, you always want, want the guitar to be in tune after you've used the arm. So you definitely need to use the arm in your tuning. If it goes sharp, you want it to be in tune after you use the arm like that. stays pretty well in tune with the arm. If it does go a few cents flat when you do a bend, you need to use the arm to bring it back in tune rather than go for a tuning peg and immediately try it. If you do that, then it's going to go sharp when you use the arm. So you use the arm as a device to keep the guitar in tune rather than think of it as something to avoid uh, because it's going to make the guitar go out of tune. Guitar necks, Rosewood fingerboard guitar necks tend to bow forward in the winter and backwards in the summer in areas where the seasons change because they will shed moisture when it dries out and they will absorb moisture when it's humid. Uh, I have a, in front of me a McCarty model. Uh, I'm going to set it up. The, uh, uh, it's slightly different. The procedures are slightly different from setting up a tremolo model. Uh, you know, it, it'll be obvious. The, Stop tail bridge is a little bit different, you know, it's a little bit easier to adjust, but it's just different, so we'll cover, uh, you know, some of those points, and uh, a lot of the other information will be covered again for you. Okay, now that we've got it more or less in tune, I'm going to check the neck relief, and I see the neck relief 
see how it's touching all the frets when you depress at the first and last fret it's touching all the frets so see we have no relief in the neck we actually have a reverse bow situation so I'm going to take my truss rod wrench which is right in front of me this time I'm just going to back it off till we have a little bit of relief turn it counterclockwise till we have a little bit of relief you can see I've raised the bridge up too much so we've got just Turn it back just a hair. Just a little bit of relief here. Not much. And so I'm going to measure my 12th fret height. I'm going to have to come down with the action some. Okay. Now I'm going to check our intonation adjustment. There's only two intonation points that are adjustable on these bridges. Okay, now that's sharp, so the treble side of the bridge is going to need to come back, lengthening the string. And the bass side is flat. I'm going to lengthen the string on the treble side. tighten up the string significantly so you've got to go back and completely retune the whole guitar. Low E. Okay. That's it's got to be shortened, but not as much. Everything goes flat, so you gotta go back. Retune. through. I'm going to stretch the strings one at a time. Okay. That pretty much covers it. I'll check the height of the nut. It's always a good thing to do. It looks good. Looks good on every string. Check the neck relief one more time. We have just a slight amount of relief. We have maybe five to ten thousandths of relief. And uh, that pretty much covers it. These are the locking pegs that we used with any guitar that was equipped with a tremolo for the first 17 years we were in business. All right, this is the way I like these done. You just, you turn the button on the peg until you reach the low spot on the cam. See, we just hit the low spot on the cam and the string drops in. Okay, then you do a sharp bend back like that. You tune it up and then you, as you tug on the string, you push on the flat side of the collar and it locks it down. You lay it in there, and when you hit the flat spot, the low spot on the cam drops in the slot, the cam catches it, and then you bend this back sharply, you tug on the string, you push on the flat spot of the collar until it locks it down. Push nice and hard, and you've got a good lock on it.